looking at the extrema. Now, extrema, I'm not going to be able to get to all of them. So that's why I told you guys like you have the formal notes to follow. But when we're looking at extrema, all we're doing is looking for the maximum and minimum values. That's it, the maximum and minimum values. So there's a couple important things here that's kind of interesting with this one. Um, when we're looking for the maximum values, I think the majority of you guys can say, like, how high is the graph or how low is the graph, right? You guys are familiar with that with quadratic equations. So as you guys look at this, you can say that, oh, that's a maximum value, right? And is that the absolute maximum value? Like, is that the highest the graph goes? Right? There's no reason for us to believe right now that the graph is going to go any higher than that point. Correct? So we can say that is an extrema. That is the absolute max. Now, could we talk about where that absolute maximum occurs, like where the location is, like the x value of it? Could we say there's a maximum value at x equals negative 2? And could we also say there's a maximum value of y equals 3? So we can talk about this maximum value in terms of its location, x, or its value, y. Correct? I tell you that just because be careful, like some questions are going to be worded differently, and they might ask you the same thing. Um, a lot of times, though, obviously, we're looking at the extreme where we're talking about the location and the value. So we could just say, you know, it's absolute ma maximum at the coordinate point negative 2, 3. This way, we're covering the location as well as the value. All right. Now, so it has an absolute maximum. Now let's look, is there an absolute minimum? Is there like a lowest that the graph goes? And you guys can see that this graph continues going down, 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 right? So it never actually reaches an absolute minimum. So there is no absolute minimum in this graph. So that's not it, because you kind of see these little peaks and valleys. And one thing I kind of forgot to mention to the glass, do you guys notice that this maximum occurs when it changes from increasing to decreasing, right? That kind of like turning point. That's kind of like what we were talking about over there. The turning points helps you with the degrees. When you have a function changing from increasing to decreasing, or not a continuous function, getting a little bit more into calculus. But anyways, you guys notice that this is creating a maximum. Or when it's changing from a decreasing to an increasing, that's creating like this little minimum value, right? But we got to be careful on these two minimums. So I think you guys would agree that these look like maxes and mins, but they're not the absolute max and mins. So let's investigate them further. So to do that, I'm going to take my lens and I'm going to zoom in. If I zoom in right here, it would probably look something like this. Would you guys agree? So relative to what I'm looking at, relative to my zooming in, you guys could see that this looks like a maximum point here, correct? And if you're kind of a little confused on the maximum point, you might say a formal definition for maximum is every point to the left and to the right is below that maximum point. A formal definition for a minimum is every point to the left and to the right is above that point. So does this follow that formula? Is every point to the left and to the right below that point? Yeah. So we could say. It's not an absolute, though, because all I got to do is zoom out, and I realize that that point's bigger. That point has a, is, a, is, is a maximum, right? And more maximum than that one, I guess. More maximum, I'm not sure. So this is what we call a relative minimum. And it's going to be on the included value 2 comma 2. So if I zoom in here on this one, it's going to look something like this. Now, this looks like a minimum, right? The only problem is we have a hole there. So there's actually not a coordinate point. Like, this is not actually a point. This point, what, negative or where is it, 0, 0. That's actually not a point. So if we go to like the left of it and say, why don't we just get really, really close? Why don't we get to like negative point zero zero zero? Well, is every point to the left and to the right above that point? No, and we can't do that if we do that to the right. Again, our logic is going to fail us. So this is not, is not a minimum at all. It looks like it's a minimum, but there's not actually one point that is a minimum value there. Do you guys see that? There's no point that we can say that's a minimum. That's actually because it's a hole. If it was a minimum, 
or if it was a point, then it's easy. Relative minimum, 0, 0. Make sense? Done. Yes? No? Yes? Why is 2, 3 It's not. It's 2, 3. Thank you. 2, 2, 2. Oh, no, it is 2, 2. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got it right. It's supposed to be a max. Sorry about that. I think I was thinking ahead of my instruction. Yeah, it's a relative max. Okay? But this is not a relative min because it's actually not a point. It's a whole. Okay? So it doesn't exist. All right, guys, we're almost done. <laughs>